hello guys welcome back to this channel my name is Victor Oya yeah I, I think this was the time I'm telling you my name <laughs> sorry <laughs> I don't I'll be giving you videos because I knew I was going to do it sooner or later my channel name is my name Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, following the episode I made last, which has not gotten a lot of good response from you guys, so I think that you may be not be liking what I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is this camera? By the way, I'm facing down this way. Are you guys seeing me? Can I lift it a bit like this? Just hold on a minute. I'm gonna try to lift this up so that you can see me a bit more clearly. Yeah. How is this now? This looks better, right? Now today you see the background where I'm coming from, not the room where I'm sleeping. I try to change the background to you guys so that you can see me more clearly. Yeah. Now, still I'm continuing about my life in India. And uh, I hope it's not getting boring to you to keep hearing about me and India. <laughs> Sooner or later, of course, I'm going to show you my country. And as some of you have suggested, I'm trying to adjust the camera uh, for me to show you. you my country, my Syria and all that stuff. I'm, they are coming, they are coming. Stay tuned. But for today, I just want to touch on what happened to me, really, in India. Hmm? What happened to me? So, sorry guys. I forgot to put on my mic. So I'm gonna put on my mic because my, I don't have really high vocals. My voice, I have a sunk voice. So it's always good for me to use a mic. So what really happened to me in India? Somebody took you to a situation, to a place, and kept you there for a very long time. And let's say that place was not very, very conducive for you. There are two things that can happen. You either die, if the place maybe say that it's, a, it's not well ventilated, it's a complete, I mean that conditions are not good for life, I mean for you. As a person, either you're gonna die there, or you're gonna survive there, and if you survive there, then there's something called adaptability. You will adapt to survive there. <coughs> now, if you are in a place where there are so many people who are not like you, hmm? I mean they are different in the sense that race-wise or whatever, and uh, you happen to be in a situation where maybe those people become aggressive against you in one or the other and, and you are not able to defend yourself because I'm talking of my situation actually. When, for example, I could find myself confronted racially profile or something, and maybe somebody has said something very bad to me, even spit on me. So if you're going to react, of course, if somebody spits on you and you react, even the public, the other people like that person will say, will, will say it is wrong. Why do you speak to this person? I mean, right is right and wrong is wrong. And human beings, as we all are, we can see this is wrong. Like, for example, if you were, when I was taking a bus, in India one time, country bus, 
buses which commute. The drivers, in a way, they are also, <laughs> they are, let me say, they are racial. I'm not shy to say that because many times when I'm trying to get to a bus, the driver shuts off, you know, the bus is automatic. He press the button and shuts off. Then you stand there, the bus goes. So, in this case, what happened actually, the bus was standing at the bus stop. Then I tried to get in. When the driver, you know, when the driver you are driving, you are seeing the screen. Instead, what does he do? He starts to drive off. And I fell down. I was coming from behind the door, you know. When you get into the bus, you get from the back. I fell down very badly and nearly went in under the tires. And uh, he stopped slightly ahead. But he was very much reprimanded. Very, the, the other passenger didn't like it. Talk very. They asked him, "Why do you drive a bus when somebody's getting inside?" You see, when somebody's doing something wrong, there are people who are human. Not who see this is wrong. This is injustice. Oh, this person is trying to get in the bus. And you're driving away. So. What happens when you are in an environment hostile in a way, not very hostile, isolated, lonely? I don't mean you can't make friends with Indian people or other people. Oh, they're very friendly. They, want, they want to be with your friends, but there is a limit at which you can blend or integrate. But when you are back in your place, for example, you are alone, there's nobody around. It's absolute quiet surrounding you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's there. So what do you do? I mean, I'm trying to say how I survived. I'm not trying to portray India like a bad place, how I survived, how it was. No, India is not dangerous. It's a very nice place to go. But for duration. So I suppose you are going there for Maybe do a course. When you're clear with it, you go back. Maybe you have one year or two years to tolerate the situation. So, and you're back. So, I'm talking about the 32 years, 30 plus years you stay in a place which is not your home environment and what is bound to happen to your character, for example. There are many things that you have to tolerate. Many things that you have to overlook. In other words, what I'm saying is that you have to persevere. Yeah. And this is exactly what happened to me. I had to persevere so many things. Somebody abused me and not hit back. Somebody, of course, one thing I have to give credit to Indians they are not violent. It's not hardly, you not find an Indian person come to slap you or do something to you. No, they are not violent, but they are, they are violence is in the mouth. <laughs> they are mouths of steel. Huh? They say things that hurt you psychologically. I mean, I'm not saying all, some, the racial ones, the bad ones are there. Who want to see you uh, unhappy. Or who want to bring you down because they are down themselves, want to feel superior. For example, in India, I didn't come across a case where somebody was driving okay, life, middle class, good, mean okay person. You know what I mean? Abusing me or saying anything to me? Never. I never saw this. All these things I'm touching at, I came from the entire low, very low caste. <laughs> I don't mean, let me say very poor. People, you see that they're struggling. These are the people who really, who really attacked me in, in, in corners where they can attack you. No, there are places where when you are passing there, nobody will dare say anything because like one time I was walking near a place called Fatiburi and uh, some guys attacked me racially. 
I was very much unhappy with these people and I tried to go against one lady who was passing by. Say no, 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 just leave them. Those people are backward. You just go. These are backward people. Please, please don't do anything, don't react. And then I did what she told me. And those people, they say, ah, let him, what will he do? Hmm? Ah, what will you do? <laughs> you see? Unnecessary provocations on <laughs> there. So these are experiences that you live through. Or oh, they tell young babies, kids, for example, somebody want to, to racially attack you, maybe I call you some names. You tell a kid, small kid, to call you a name. Already I told you from the other videos which names they prevail there. They call you very loudly. And one or two of them, they call you that name. Him will not call you. Hmm? It's a derogatory, for example, when somebody says this word, I don't want to keep repeating it because maybe it's healthy for me to keep it that way. <coughs> they use kids to attack you then. What would you do, do to kids when you can't turn back and ask and say, they call the kids, why are you doing this? Hey, why are you doing this? Don't say this. Don't say. And yet they're the ones who are telling the kids. In some cases, I found them actually telling them. Then I asked them, why, what are you teaching this kid? to say. So these things are there. Now what I'm trying to say is that what did all these things do to me? I had to turn a bad situation to a good situation. You try to find the good in bad, you know, in what you consider to be bad. For example, the loneliness there, uh, all these things that were there that I encountered, this attacks, these survival things that I have to go through. Because in India, for example, see, you ask, why are you selling stuff? Because in India, you cannot work. There's no job. Why didn't you go back? Maybe I was not able to go back at the time. Because India is not, Kenya and India, they are very, not very near. You need resources to go. <laughs> you didn't have the resources to come. To go. And there was penalties there, for example. You can't leave if you have let me use the right word, overstayed. Hmm? You have to pay fine. You see, this one thing that I really found, how can I be able to just put this thing in right perspective? You overstay in a place, it's not necessarily deliberate. You could find your sense of circumstances where maybe you went there and the sponsor who took you there is no longer there, hmm? or is no longer able to support you. So what happens? So it's not always deliberate that, oh, you like a place, that's why you stayed. No, it's not like that. And uh, the penalty is equally applying. You have to pay something like one lakh rupees to leave. How well do you get the one lakh rupees? So don't ask why somebody has stayed in a place for very long. There are reasons why somebody will. Maybe there's somebody who likes it, but it's not really commonly applying to everybody. So... Those who will ask why were you there, why didn't you leave? Those are the reasons for you to leave India if you stay there beyond your visas there, which is by the way not deliberate. You have to pay penalty, right? And the penalty is no small money; it's a lot of money, and of course you risk jail. It used to happen like that, but over time maybe it turned from jail to penalty. So you are there in a situation, so you don't know what exactly to do, how to move. Even if sometimes you will just conceive, can I cross the border? Which border do you cross to where? Even there's another country you need a visa, then maybe you don't have your passport has expired. So what do you do? So you keep staying until things will work out. When they'll work out, God is uh, <laughs> there. <laughs> For my case, they worked out, and that's the duration it took for them to work out, so don't ask why. So how do I, how did I go about maneuvering my ways, making sure that I'm alive, I'm healthy? Is uh, I said, look, I'm in a place where I'm alone. Nobody's there to look after me. There's a lot of freedom there, by the way. And you can go out and just make one or two hundred rupees from your friends there. This, uh, public mercy, hmm? 
those who have seen some people attacking me in the video saying that I was cheating. What do you mean? Cheating Indians by selling them uh, these things. They are things, they manufacture them. And there's a song there actually which says the Chani Job to China. That market is called Chani Job to China. It's a song that is there. People who sang there. And what was the reason is because they know those things come from China. And that those who are made, made in India. So when I'm selling these things, I'm not cheating anybody. I'm telling them this thing I'm brought from Chani Job and I all sell it. And even if when they go there, they buy them the same price. So that's why they used to give me very little. There was no cheating taking place there. Yeah, so stop your head. So what I'm saying here, how uh, then you get yourself some small money and you come on, say I'm alone here. Alcohol is very cheap there. <laughs> You'll drink, drink and drink. You'll be killing yourself. I didn't do this. I said I have to look after my health, I have to look after myself, so the first thing that, let me see this camera, so the first thing that I'll do, I will not drink, no drinking whatsoever, okay, so I didn't drink alcohol in India, I don't drink actually, I don't drink, I don't smoke, that's one bad habit, and there are several others which I can't mention in the videos, that I abstain from to make sure that I'm in the right path until God help me. So if I'm making a little money, I'll keep it in my pocket, I eat well and sleep and make sure I'm in good terms with my landlord and pay him or her. This was a lady holding the money. And I keep staying. So how did I pass my time? Did I have girlfriends or did I have this or how I survived actually? The best way I said, you know, it was a realization that came to me. I said, why not use my time and study hmm? something that will benefit me from this kind of a situation because the, the room is too silent, nobody is there, you are alone throughout, but you have this thing called Wi-Fi and internet, it's so cheap in India, but very, very affordable, like you would put 300 rupees in a mobile, it runs for one month, 2GB every day. Uh, if you put 600 internet, it's unlimited for one month, and you can share that with your neighbor. And that's what I did. When I installed internet, Wi-Fi, then I started to study. Hmm? Yeah, I intensely, intensely studied. What did I study? Engineering. I didn't go to college to study this engineering that I am now. I studied myself. I did automobile engineering on my own. Then I did, after I, I did that, two, actually two, I was intensely studying. Because now there was nothing. And then that is that I realized that I could study online, log into PDFs, files, uh, log into different universities in the world, like Weber University, Duke University, MIT, many universities I logged into, pro virtual professors who lectured me in difference. In my engineering that I did on my own, I had several teachers, professors, or well over 100 different on the same subject including mathematics, that I became a very good mathematician, right? Did all types of maths from, from algebra, geometry, to high maths like differential, integrations, calculus, name it. I did all these things. That's how I used my time. I studied aeronautic engineering. Hmm? That now I feel that actually, <laughs> If I was to be given resources, I can manufacture these things because I studied them in detail over a long period of time and I had all the resources to do that. Mm. I done software engineering from an institute, a reputable one. That, uh, the other side of engineering that I did, 
was uh, computer engineering. You know, if you are done software engineering, it means you are done half of computer engineering. The rest is to study how this logic gets work and the motherboards and yeah, transistors and so. So I did a lot of studies in this period of time. And over time, I felt changes were coming to me in terms of intellectual abilities. Mm -hmm. The only drawback I had that I didn't have a place to go and do practice of what I read. So like, for example, I would have loved that I would be, uh, go for internship or something to go to, to go where practicals are. So what I used to do is that I ran the computer simulation of the same. Yeah, I see everything that I've studied. Or even, for example, when the internal combustion engine gasoline, how it works. I see how the crankshaft moves, the, the, you know, the shaft, the uh, camshaft moves, intake manifold, what is it? What is the carburetor? What is EFI? EFI? You know, I studied those animations which helped me for the, from the practical part of it, and the theory part of it, I was good. So that's how I used my time. Now as I speak, I feel that I'm a really good engineer. Because I not only did, I not only did studied uh, automobile, I did aeronautic engineering on my own. The flaps, the slurs, the ailerons, the radar, fuselage, name it, plus cockpit, yeah, maneuver and all, all that, how it works, control surfaces, primary, secondary controls, the aircraft, yeah, I studied all that, indicated airspeed, altitude indicator, altimeter, head, turning coordinate, heading, sliding, six flight instruments, how they work without which an aircraft cannot. I studied all that stuff. And then I said, when you know, when you study, there are no limits. So I kept going on and even touched on electricals, electronics, engineering, even which I tried to do at the practicals with some engineers who are working in some places. So that's how it, I came to develop this what I am, and then beyond that, there is something that really happened to me. And this thing that happened to me is um, I developed perseverance and never let myself fall into a depression from the circumstances of surrounding me. Of course, it's not fun when you wake up every day at three o'clock, have to take a shower, mm, stay a few minutes, read a bit, read, I mean read, not read a bit like for example I used to study from 4 a.m. up to 8 in the morning around four hours every day or five hours before I go out to go and now battle for a living it's no fun when I never had to carry that bag and go out because I knew what I was gonna go through a lot of struggle and uh, it will take around say for example if I left around 12 noon or 11 o'clock I come back around nine in the in the evening, very tired. So it's not fun. So something I developed, for example, is perseverance. Hmm? So um, I, well, I was feeling that really, that even people I was interacting with told me you have really good personality. I don't know what they meant. Oh, you are very good at this and that, but they didn't know that actually I developed that age. I never let myself feel like low and fall into a depression. <laughs> Which is, by the way, I know people rain mad there. Some people strip over the clothes and just run the street. But I'm talking of people from, for example, New Kenya who became mad and removed their clothes. <laughs> but, you know, for various reasons, you can't handle the depression. So it made me a very strong person. I suspect that thing so that I, for me to have survived all that time and come out unscathed, it gave me a certain age or discipline, things that I could overlook. When you're walking the street and somebody spits on you and you don't do anything, you just go. 
or somebody will abuse you or even push you. But you, you, you know it's not good like if somebody pushes you. But you feel something that... Like one time I went to a shop and somebody started to fight me for nothing. And what happened that one kid, you know, there are small, small street kids who come to beg you for coins. And they see that, oh, this person has come from a different race, from abroad. They want to get something from me. I was upset that day and I told the kid, go ahead, come on, go. And somebody from nowhere came to me and confronted me and told me, why are you saying this to this kid? Don't say that to this kid. Then he, he started a scabble with me. Luckily for me, I've told in the other video that people knew me came and said, no, what is the problem? So you start to feel this environment is not my environment. But the one thing with the Indian people, they are very, when they see this, they come to your rescue. They, they know what's going on. They come for, to rescue if they see that. What they just look and say, no, 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 come on. They know this person is just taking the idea that you're not from here. And even then he was telling me, yeah, you have a visa passport, so is he a policeman? <laughs> the policeman should ask me this. Because I'll be able to explain myself and he can understand, he understands the law. So it made me this type of character. I'm allowed to handle anxieties also. Sometimes you don't know what will happen to you. Like, for example, I know, of course, there's that thing there that you are not supposed to sell in India. But this is a person who has stayed for more than five years in a place. So you are like, you know, you could even apply for citizenship. So what do you do to survive? Mm. Anxiety, I have to handle anxiety when I meet with people who don't want me to sell. I mean, like from the authority side, like MCDs, and I wasn't really like putting things in a place to sell. But like a policeman, for example, sometimes you feel what's going to happen next. Some of them will stop you and ask you, What are you doing? What is this and that? Where did you bring these things from? You explain to him and say, Well, don't make any trouble, sell, but don't make cause any problem. You get it. So I developed all that, and uh, also I make sure that some people are very good. The Indian guys, Indian good people, they tell me at this time you go. You know you are not from here. And the people think like this. Don't go sell beyond six. You go. You live in a society, you know. <laughs> so they carry you along. They carried me along this uh, period of time. So, I'm not saying my Indian guys, brothers are very good. <laughs> they, they kept me alive for very long. They kept me alive for very long, and so I remain forever grateful to this fact that. I, but we, you have to, you know, keep yourself in a state where you agree with the society, the culture where you are in. You blend properly with the people. Be nice. Be good. Even if when you attack, smile and say, well, like when somebody used to call me this this name, I've told you time and again, I'm, I said, okay, I'm, I'm see, <laughs> call me, I'm see. Like, but what, who are you then? Okay, me, I, am, I agree, I have not said no, I'm not what you have called me. What, what about you? And then another friend of mine, <laughs> Indian, actually somebody told me, whenever they tell you this, call them this. So when they say Kalu, which means black, I say Pila, which means yellow. <laughs> so they, they laugh. <laughs> they find it funny. Because if we are using colors to identify, <laughs> let me also identify with the same thing. So it becomes fun, you know, comical, you know. Find comedy in something that could otherwise tend to be uh, tragic. So, yeah. So I became this person who can be patient, tolerant. I, I learned how to handle anxiety, not to depress me, because depression is not something healthy. Mm -hmm. And also to develop my psychological being, you know, like when you look down upon a race and say, this race is like, I know what I'm capable of. I look at the person who's telling me this. <coughs> As in, have you ever gone out of India? No. 
So, how do you know what is over there? No. So, what makes you make this opinion? You know? So, I developed this uh, argumentative, tough brain and character. And to fight, of course, it's like fight your struggles. It's real there. Yeah? And uh, that's how I managed. Hmm? That's how I managed. I never fell to a depression and I learned out on anxiety, my BP, blood pressure. <laughs> When there's no time, a, yeah, a doctor, there's no time a doctor told me that I'm having high blood pressure. <laughs> it's so possible. Mm. And uh, what if I fell sick? I'll go to hospital. So you are all alone, nobody's there, you have to take care of yourself. And if you go to these kind of environments, this is a way to go about your life. Just learn what is good for, from these people, what they like and behave the way they want. Otherwise, you have to go from there. If they attack you, there's no need, like Jesus said, for those who are Christian, if somebody slaps you one cheek, turn the other one. <laughs> That's what I used to do. Because I find it useless, for example, to fight with all these people. You are one against so many. So I agreed what they want to call me, let them call me, no problem, so long as nobody harms me. And uh, you develop that attitude. And it's a very good attitude in life, I think. Even when you are like back here in your own country, like, you know, people, you, they face situations like in their homes. You know, life is difficult, people suicide, they don't need to do that. Just go on, come hanging, hanging on there, hanging there. Life is struggle. That's what makes it interesting. You have to persevere. Don't allow yourself to fall de depression over time. You come out of the situation. Mm. Don't hang yourself. Don't throw yourself from buildings. Just keep going. Things will work fine in the end. Don't worry. It's all gonna be all right, like <laughs> Bob Marley says. Don't worry about the things. Everything is it's gonna be all right, <laughs> you see. So that's what I mean, guys. For today, I think this is a very long video I made. Mm. So I keep making these videos before I start showing you my city. I'm gonna go even to the village, I'll show you. Come on, stay tuned. A lot is going to come in this channel. Before I go back to what we normally do in this channel, this is still about my series about my life in India back home and what's going on. Okay, bye for today. Please share, subscribe to this channel, like, comment, as we keep bringing you more stuff about life. <laughs>